Hello students, so finally we are in the last part from work energy power chapter and this is our last lecture related to collision portion also. In this lecture we will discuss, we are going to discussing about a topic that is named as perfectly inelastic collision. In first lecture of collision we completed elastic collision in one dimension. In second lecture we just completed that is the elastic collision in two dimension and we learn about the coefficient of distribution and its values for different types of collision. Now today we are going to discussing that is the perfectly inelastic collision. So all of you know I think that the meaning of perfectly inelastic collision that I completed in the first lecture. In case of inelastic collision, there is a loss of kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is not conserved. This is the basic difference. So a collision is said to be perfectly inelastic. They follow the following three conditions. Condition number one, you write it. See, first one, after collision, both the bodies stick together and moving with a common velocity. A body moving with a velocity and strike a target here there is another body at rest strike a target and after this collision these two body stick together and moving with a common velocity first one second one you see the momentum remains constant that is we already known that in every types of collision moment remains concept and the final one that is the kinetic energy before collision is more than the kinetic energy after collision this point is important in case of elastic collision we learn that the kinetic energy before collision is exactly equal to kinetic energy after collision but here before collision kinetic energy is more than the kinetic energy after collision so there must be a loss of kinetic energy so in this lecture we will discuss we will prove how much kinetic energy loss in case of perfectly inelastic collision and we will prove the second point that is kinetic energy after before collision is more than the kinetic energy after collision we will prove this two theorem one there is a how much amount of kinetic energy is losses and kinetic energy before collision is more than the kinetic energy after collision so before going to that part at first one important question arises in your mind that is why here kinetic energy before collision and in which format kinetic energy losses you, you just recall the in case of elastic collision i told that uh, during collision there is a deformation of two bodies but after deformation that is after collision two bodies regain its original shape and moving with different velocities v1 and v2 so during collision some energy losses but it's re again regain its original shape so in that case kinetic energy before collision is equal to kinetic energy after collision but here during you see during collision two bodies deform but during this deformation kinetic energy losses this deformation is not regained in case of perfectly inelastic collision the body is making deform and this deformed body moving with a common velocity v so some energy losses here in the form of deformation you can say in the form of heat and sound also so now we will prove that the how much kinetic energy losses here so at first you draw this diagram and explain this basic part there is a body write it a body of mass m1 moving with velocity u1 and strike a target of mass m2 which is under rest and after collision these two bodies collide uh, sorry streak together and moving with a common velocity v now first of all here we apply conservation law of momentum okay apply it so when we apply conservation law of momentum apply it at first so apply conservation law of momentum that is linear momentum before collision is exactly equal to linear momentum after collision before collision mass m1 moving with velocity u1 so m1 u1 plus this body at rest so 0 
these two body masses added up that is stick together m1 plus m2 moving with velocity v so from this equation you can write the expression of v that is v equal to m1 divided by m1 plus of m2 with multiple of u1 suppose this is our equation number one okay now our condition that is kinetic energy before is more than the kinetic energy after so how much kinetic energy loss so find it loss of kinetic energy loss of ke which is represented as del k that is equal to final minus initial or initial minus final obviously initial minus final because here initial kinetic energy is more so kinetic energy loss that is k initial minus of k final now what is k initial mass m1 moving with u1 so kinetic energy k initial that is half m1 u1 square this one is at rest so kinetic energy is zero minus of what is final kinetic energy mass m1 plus m2 moving with v that is half m1 plus of m2 and there is v square now you see in equation one you know the expression of v you just use equation one here so right that is half m1 u1 square minus of half m1 plus of m2 in the place of v square you write this one that is m1 square u1 square divided by m1 plus of m2 whole square now take a common okay at first you cancel this one one m1 plus m2 cancel out so there is just one part of m1 plus m2 now take a common that is half m1 e1 square so here this one will be one and here you see you take a common half m1 e1 square so there must be m1 and the lower part there is m1 plus of m2 m1 plus of m2 now simplify this one then you can easily find out on the expression okay that is how much kinetic energy losses here so this one will be del k is equal to half m1 u1 square and this one will be you see m1 plus m2 so this one will be m1 plus m2 and there is minus of m1 so m1 m1 cancel out the final expression that is half m1 m2 u1 square divided by m1 plus of m2 this is the expression of loss of kinetic energy in case of perfectly inelastic collision you can also find out one important thing here you see this is the initial kinetic energy you can find out del k by k initial this is the initial kinetic energy you see half m1 u1 square so this is ki take a this part left hand side so this one will be del k by ki so the expression will be m2 divided by m1 plus m2 this part is also is important student the fractional change of kinetic energy in case of perfectly inelastic collision that is the expression is m1 divided by m1 plus m2 okay so this is the first part now we'll check we'll give the ratio of kinetic energy okay find it so our second part we'll check the ratio of kinetic energy that is k final divided by k initial check it so now kf by ki what is the expression of kf a half m1 plus m2 with multiple of v square and the lower part that is half m1 u1 square now half half cancel out that is m1 plus m2 in lower part that is m1 and what is v square by u1 square you just uh, see equation number one from equation you can write u1 that is equal to m1 plus m2 into v that is the conservation law of momentum so from this equation you can write you see v write it here that is v equal to m1 
m1 plus m2 with multiple of e1 take e1 this side so v by e1 that means m1 divided by m1 plus m2 write it here there is v square by e1 square so this part will be square that is m1 square divided by m1 plus m2 whole square so 1 m1 remaining here and 1 m1 plus m2 is remains here so the expression that is the ratio kf by ki will be m1 divided by m1 plus m2 from this equation you see this is the ratio of kinetic energy final by kinetic energy initial this is the fractional change of kinetic energy this one is m2 divided by m1 plus m2 this one is m1 divided by m1 plus m2 this one is important theorem there is the loss of kinetic energy this is the theorem that is fractional change of kinetic energy and this is the ratio of final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy now you know this one that is m1 plus m2 is more than m1 this is the addition of two masses so lower part is higher than the upper one so obviously kf by ki must be less than one from this equation you can say kf less than ki you see we prove this one there is the kinetic energy initial is greater than kinetic energy final or you can say kinetic energy final is less than kinetic energy initial okay now another thing if the target is massive target massive that means the mass m2 is more than m1 right if m2 greater greater m1 that is target is massive then what happens that is m1 plus m2 more than greater greater with respect to m1 so this kf by ki is equivalent to zero nearly equals to zero because this lower part is greater greater with respect to m1 the lower part is higher with respect to m1 so this ratio must be nearly equals to zero from this expression you can write kinetic energy final is equal to zero that is when a what when a light body strikes a massive stationary body then after the collision the total kinetic energy is equal to zero there's the total kinetic energy fully kinetic energy losses okay so this is all about perfectly inelastic collision and this is the theoretical concept now you go back to your exercise book and solve some important numericals related to uh, this one there is a perfectly inelastic collision and if there is any problem tell me in the comment section so today i'm ending here meet you soon tada